Hey guys, YouTube World 100 here. Alright, now here I am talking about another Christmas Carol adaptation. Now I'm going to go over the Muppet Christmas Carol. So, yeah, this is a really, really good movie. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this was the second of three adaptations of A Christmas Carol that was made by Disney. And once again, Disney did do a really good job with a Christmas Carol adaptation. Yeah, I think the consensus, the consensus on Rotten Tomatoes really does sum this movie up. It may not be the finest version of Charles Dickens' tale to grace the screen, but The Muppet Christmas Carol is funny and heartwarming and serves as a good introduction to the story for young viewers. And yeah, that's basically what it is. Yeah, just like with the Mickey Christmas Carol, this version is like one that has introduced a lot of younger people to the story. So, you know, just like the Mickey Christmas Carol, I mean, this is like a good way for younger generations to be introduced. Now, I watched Nostalgia Critics Disney summer review for this movie, and yeah, he basically has has basically nailed the nailed it on the head with his with what he said about this film. I mean, it is a real good movie. It's really not like that funny as like the Muppets are known to be. And I mean, it's really not like it's really not supposed to be that funny. I mean, Christmas Carol it really doesn't have a lot of humor to it. It is kind of like a more serious tone for your like stories. And yeah, as far as the adaptation of Christmas Carol goes, I mean, it does do a good job at it. You know, of course, like like in this movie you have like a bunch of Muppets and the roles of the characters. Like there's Kermit the Frog as Cratchit. There's Miss Piggy as Mrs. Cratchit. It, it has like Gonzo oh, like, for, <laughs> acting as if he's Charles Dickens while he and Rizzo are like narrating this film. And yet you have like, of course, like, the biggest thing ever, like, probably the thing that was just, like, way too obvious to avoid, Lloyd, was Fozzie as Fozzie Wig. I mean, like Nostalgia Critic said in his review, I mean, yeah, this movie was probably just put together just to use that pun, and... Yeah, that could be one of the reasons why they did it. Like I was just said, I mean, this was probably one of the things that was just, like, way too obvious for them to avoid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you also have, like, a bunch of other, like, Muppet characters in the roles in this film. But you also do have, like, a live-action cast in here. You do have Michael Caine as Scrooge in this film. And you have... Uh, Stephen McIntosh as Fred, and and Meredith Braun as Scrooge, his, his old love interest, Belle. Mm. Yeah, so you do have a live action cast of this. And Nostalgia Critic said that he doesn't feel that Michael Caine is that great of a Scrooge. And quite honestly, I can actually see why. Because, yeah, it does seem like just, there are some things where you just feel like Michael Caine does phone it in. Like that scene where he's dancing with the Ghost of Christmas Present as he's singing that song. And, yeah, just some line deliveries and just the way he acts sometimes, just, it really doesn't seem that legit. Just feels really phoned in. And plus, for me personally... Since I've, like, seen Michael Caine in a lot of different movies, like, I, he was in the third Austin Powers film, Secondhand Lions, of course he was Alfred in the Dark Knight trilogy. After everything that I've seen Michael Caine in, I just, uh, I, just, like, like, I think too much of, like, what he's, the other things that he's done, that I just really can't see him in the role of Scrooge, I mean... I remember I was, a while ago, I was watching, like, Justin Shady's old video about how he felt about Ben Affleck as 
being now the new Batman, he was just was saying that you're thinking too much of, of like the actor because the actor's so famous that you just really don't think of him and you just can't take him seriously in the role. And I think that that may be the case here too. Just after everything I've seen Michael Caine in, I just really just don't take him like that much as Scrooge. I mean, I'm sure back then, like before. Like, back when this movie was originally released, like, it was easier to actually take Michael Caine in the role. Well, because, yeah, this movie was before he did all that stuff that I've seen him in before. But for me, since I, like, saw, uh, like, all of that stuff before, and I've just watched a bunch of stuff with Michael Caine, and then watching this, I just really don't get that feeling with it. Yeah, but, I mean, Michael Caine, overall, he's not bad in the role. I mean, he still does, like, this... A decent job, so yeah, I really can't say like Michael Caine's really the worst Scrooge of all time. Like he's still a decent Scrooge, yeah. And yeah, yeah. What I it also is interesting that they do make like some like they do like do kind of like diff certain and you know, changes into this version that isn't really in the put in any other versions of a Christmas Carol. Like, instead of just Jacob Marley who as Scrooge's old partner, instead, like, Scrooge has two deceased partners that are, like, now carrying chains. Jacob Marley and Robert Marley. So, yeah, it's interesting to see that there are two ooh, spirits that come to warn Scrooge and or his partners rather than just one. Yeah, and this movie, like, as a live-action movie... He, it is like finally good like when it shows Jacob Marley's face in the Scrooge's door knocker like it actually shows like the knocker actually does transform into Marley's face rather than just it fading in and stuff so yeah it's good to finally see that done good yeah and it has a good design for the ghost of Christmas past ghost of Christmas past is kind of like once again kind of like a small angel that does seem pretty ageless. Does he? Yeah. And, yes. And, yeah, it once again just goes through the timeline and stuff. The Ghost of Christmas Past shows Scrooge, like, when he was, like, like, kind of lonely in school. And then how he was employed by Fozzie Wig. Yeah, and, like, how he... Then fell in love with Belle, but Belle eventually left Scrooge when she felt that he cared more about money than her. And then, uh, and then when we come to the Ghost of Christmas Present, once again, like another like really great, a like kind of twist here, kind of like a you, different thing that they do with the Ghost of Christmas Present here. So the Ghost of Christmas Present really is not. Is always like has basically a short term memory since like actually is living in the present, and so yeah, I mean, yeah, the ghost of Christmas present just like forgets he says things and he says them again, yeah, basically, like he forgets them like right away. It kind of reminds me of like from 51st Dates with the 10 second Tom, yeah, it kind of does remind me of somewhat of that, yeah, yeah. and the ghost of Christmas present does show Scrooge. The position Cratchit is in and how he, the small food portions that he's able to provide for his family. And what I really do like about that, this scene, is that when it shows Cratchit's family, of course it has like, as I said, Cratchit is played by Kermit and his wife is played by Miss Piggy. And what I really like about it is that the daughters are also pigs and the sons are frogs. So I do kind of, that's... Uh, that's a pretty, like, good twist for it. Yeah, and, yeah, it has, like, Tiny Tim, of course. Tiny Tim is the small frog. Yeah, Tiny Tim is actually played by Robin the Frog. Yeah. And eventually, like, once the Ghost of Christmas present is about to leave, Scrooge it just shows that the Ghost of Christmas present is actually, like, starting to really age. Age, yeah. And then, eventually, then, the Scrooge eventually f sees the Ghost of Christmas Future. 
And, yeah, the Ghost of Christmas Future really is not that, like, dark or mysterious here, but this is a Muppet movie, so it's, I guess it's not really supposed to be that intimidating. And then, like, the Ghost of Christmas Future, once again, just shows Scrooge, like, like, the group of people, like, celebrating the death of, of Scrooge, unbeknownst to Scrooge, and it's him right there, yeah. And also, like, in Fred's home, it's, like, showing that Fred is, like, playing a, kind of like a questions game, or a guessing game, basically saying that Scrooge is basically just cold and heartless and stuff. And then it shows the whole the Cratchit family just mourning over the death of Tiny Tim, once again, yeah. And then Scrooge eventually then discovers that he will also die also, and, uh, I mean, the movie tries to really get a good uh, kind of reaction and, like, a good feel for it, like, it does try to give it, like, that feel that it had in the 84 film, it does kind of have, like, a similar music tone to it, but... It just really doesn't come off as well as the 1984 film did. Like, the 1984 film just went perfectly. Like, when Scrooge wiped off the snow off of the stone and saw that his name was on the grave. And the music that played it was just perfect for the scene. This film, like, it tries to do it that same way, but it just doesn't come off like that. You know. Oh, and I should also, like, do, like talk about how this film, what I also do kind of like about it is, it does kind of, like, do things a little, kind of similar to the Mickey version. Like, in the beginning, when Fred, like, makes the invitation to Scrooge for Christmas dinner, and he also, like, brings Scrooge a wreath, just like how it was in the Mickey Christmas Carol. Oh, yeah. And Scrooge eventually just throws the wreath outside, yeah. And I should also say, like, another interesting change that this film has that aren't really in other Christmas Carol adaptations is it's not just Cratchit working for Scrooge. Like, Cratchit actually does have, have like, other co-workers that work for Scrooge as well in the counting house. So, yeah, kind of another change right there. <laughs> but then, yeah, eventually, you know, like, Scrooge does choose to change his ways, and then when he awakes in his bedroom, he then sees... He's the young boy like out there and sends the boy to buy that huge turkey for Cratchit. And then Cratchit then, well, no, not Cratchit, Scrooge, and just went out and then he donated money for the charity workers. There's, yeah, the charity workers also in this film and, you know, yeah. And, yeah, and throughout this film, like, you, as I've said, have Gonzo as Dickens and also Rizzo just always narrating. And, you know, there's, like, stuff always happening to them throughout the film. Like, the film, like, just, like, keeps cutting over to, like, Gonzo and Rizzo. And it seems like every time something happens to them, well, it's mostly Rizzo the stuff happens to. Yeah. And another thing that this film also does, like the Mickey version did, is when Scrooge actually visits Cratchit's home, he, like, starts just pretends that he's still as his, his, like, stern, cold personnel attitude, but then he then reveals his, how he's changed his attitude to Cratchit, and then he raises his salary and then pays off mortgage. Engine stuff, and then, yeah, it, then it just ends with Gonzo and Rizzo just explaining, like, the same thing that we've heard before, how Tiny Tim doesn't die, and then he becomes close to Scrooge, and Scrooge is basically a secondary father to Tiny Tim, and then it just shows, like, basically the entire neighborhood celebrating Christmas with Scrooge and the Cratchit family, so, yeah. So, it is a pretty good movie right here, yeah. It's not really, like, the best, not, like, the greatest way to be introduced to A Christmas Carol, but it's still a really good way for younger people to be introduced to it, just like the Mickey version. So, yeah, overall, well, still a pretty good movie. I mean, yeah, 
it is like a good version to watch, especially with just like the Mickey one, it's like a good family version of a Christmas Carol to watch. So yeah, if you have family, you'll like you'll enjoy watching this film. All right, so yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess that's all I really have to say about the Muppet Christmas Carol. A good movie, not the best adaptation of a Christmas Carol, and really not like the usual Muppet project that you would expect, but still a good film. Oh, and also, yeah, this film was also like a dedication to Jim Henson because yeah, Jim Henson had just because yeah, you all know Jim Henson, the creator of the Muppets. He died during like the pre-production of this film, and so this film was dedicated to. Jim Henson and his other puppeteer Richard Hunt and the film was actually under the direction of Jim Henson's own son Brian so yeah that's a good homage right there so yeah a good hood like at Christmas Carol movie and a great homage to Jim Henson all right so all right so yeah that's all I have to say about the Muppet Christmas Carol so I hope you guys enjoyed this video so yeah thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later